Hello, my butterflies, and this video is going to be my review on The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So, I think it goes without saying, you know, I don't think it's a question. I gave this five stars. Like, this has made it to my top favorites this year or like ever like this is just made it to my favorites list period but talking for this year this is like one of my favorites i've read this year like this is this is probably like surpassed and hit to number one y'all like i loved this book so freaking much and I, I don't know, I was scared that I wasn't going to like it. Just because, you know, when you hear a book like really hyped up and everybody loved it, even with the content matter that it's dealing with, I was just like, oh my God, what if I don't like this book? Like, <laughs> what I'm going to look like and how I'm going to sound, because y'all know I'm honest. If I didn't like it, I was going to come on here and tell you I didn't like it. So it's like, then how that was going to make me look, I was like, oh my God, I, I didn't like it. I was going to be like the only person that didn't like this book. But I fucking love this book and I cracked up so much while I was reading this book. It was just so relatable. And to be honest, I don't know if it was so relatable because I'm black, like Star. I don't know if that's why I was so relatable or just like in general it was so relatable because she was such a relatable character. And this is just, all of the characters were just so relatable because it's like everyday character, they're everyday people. And so I, I don't know if it was because I, I'm black and she's black or just because it's like everyday character. I was just reading this and just about everything. I was like, that is so true. And that's really why I cracked up so much reading this. Because so many things that I read, I was just like, I would laugh and I'm like, oh my god, that's so true. It's funny because it's so true. So, sorry if I look like crap and I keep putting on my shirt. I felt like I was flashing, but I don't think I was. Um, I just got off from work. Sorry about the lighting because it's it's disgusting outside. Like it's it, it like pouring down earlier. If y'all follow my bookstagram, if y'all don't know, I do have a bookstagram now, so I, all my social media stuff is linked below, y'all should go look at it, but if you follow my bookstagram, either my regular Instagram, y'all saw my picture that I took at work, cause I was struggling, <laughs> and um, I work at Home Depot, and I happened to be in the garden center today, and they fucking tore the fuck down, like it poured down today, thank you Louisiana weather, and um, yeah, you will see what I struggle with, but it's just really gross outside, it's like dark clouds look like it's going to rain again so sorry about my lighting i could have waited and filmed this but i just wanted to film it right now even though i don't think i'm gonna forget anything it's just fresh in my mind i just felt like sitting down and filming and um i need to do that more often but if y'all don't know oh i still have my bookmark here i thought to put out um, but if y'all don't know this is, if, if you don't know what the fuck this is about god help you but i'm um, gonna help you out a little bit along the way okay jesus is gonna reach through me so i can help you understand what this book is about this book is about this girl named star she's 16 years old and she lives in she lives in a poor neighborhood but she goes to school in like this rich white suburban neighborhood this really pre private school neighborhood okay she's like one of the only it's very few black people that go there she's on a scholarship there blah blah blah, blah. anyway one night she goes to a spring break party that's thrown by some people in her neighborhood and her sister brings her to this party and shooting happens and she ends up running into an old friend Khalil and he takes her home. On the way to her, him taking her home, they get stopped by the police and the police end up shooting an unarmed Khalil. And he ends up dying on the scene and Star is the only one that was there. She was the only witness besides the police officer that was there and can testify to what happened. And it goes on her journey about... Um, her freedom of speech, you know, how, how, like what will make her feel free if, if she'll be comfortable not saying anything at all or if she's going to be comfortable just letting everybody know exactly what happened. She's having a hard time because she feels like she's going to get judged no matter what she does, even if she does um, say exactly what happened and comes out and tell people that she was the witness. She feels like she's going to get judged um, badly by her friends at her prep school, but she feels like that she's going to get, you know, uplifting voices from people in her neighborhood so she's really struggling with two sides of herself because she's in two different worlds and she's trying her hardest not to let those two worlds mix so she's actually really trying learning about herself a lot and learning that it's okay to be her so i just thought this book was just so freaking amazing i don't know if my um synopsis was any better like than anybody <laughs> like i'm pretty sure it wasn't that good i'm not really that good at giving people synopsis but i'm pretty sure that did pretty good but i love this book so freaking much like y'all don't even understand like i love this book so fucking much like if i were gay and andy thomas was gay like i would propose to her like if i flew that way sweetie i would get on my knees and propose to this woman because she did some amazing work like i haven't felt like this 
about a book in a while like this like oh my god like just because i gave it five stars don't no, like y'all understand like five stars plus all the feelings i had reading this book she's fucking awesome like yeah i'm i, I cannot wait to read more from Angel Time because this book is just fucking amazing. One thing that I really, really loved um, about reading this book was that I was instantly like into the story. Like instantly my feelings, my attention was in the story. You know how some books you kind of got to wait like maybe a couple chapters before you really feel like getting like you're in the rhythm of the story. I immediately like from chapter one felt like I was like doing in the motions of everybody else in the stories and, and, and actually in the story I was actually my attention was drawn immediately from the beginning I didn't have to wait a quarter of the way I didn't have to wait halfway through so I love that so freaking much Cause sometimes it's very frustrating when you have to wait maybe a quarter of the way through a book before you're actually into the story so I'm so happy I did not have to go through that with this book then even though I knew even though we know from the synopsis Khalil is gonna get shot and Khalil is gonna die that still like when it actually happened actually reading it it still like hit me and I was like oh my god like I don't know why I was shocked but reading this I was actually still like shocked like I didn't know that this was going to happen so I and, and that's not a bad thing that's a really really good thing because that shows how emotionally in tuned you are with the book and emotionally in tuned you are with the characters and I love being here with my characters I love the fact that I can feel what you're feeling and I can like walk in your shoes while you're walking in them I love having that relationship with any characters that I read about and that's another thing that she did so amazing she just was just and it's time to put a foot in this book people like I don't know how many times and how many ways I gotta say it she put a foot in this okay she wasn't playing no games also, like I said earlier, I just love that I could relate to so many things in this book. This book was just so relatable. It's like, even like from the beginning when she's talking about Kenya, which is her her sister. Yeah, okay. We'll say it, it's her sister. And it's just how she describes her being so messy. And I was like, oh my God, we all have like a messy sister or at least one messy friend. And I was like, oh, I understand what she's saying. And it's just sometimes you always have that. You always have at least one friend or one family member that's just always all about drama and I was like oh my god I understand that like I'm like here with that even how their family was set up how the family relationships was set up to the point where how she was saying her mother can like get you straight with just saying your name a certain way just looking at you a certain way and I was just like yes I was like my mom does the same thing to me and I'm 21 and she still gets me with the look I'm trying to master the look I'm gonna call it the mom look or the death stare because that's what it feels like when you get it Oh my god, I'm trying to master it and I think I'm almost there because Kalea was doing something other that I can't remember what it was doing and she's like at the point, she's a year old people and she's at the point where it's like she she know what she's doing, she shouldn't be doing it so she like turns around to see if anybody's looking at her and she turned around to see if I was looking at her and I guess the I, I just looked, I didn't say anything, I just looked at her and she just like stopped what she was doing and moved and I was like did I just do the look? I was like, did I just do the look? So, oh my God, just when she did that, I was like, yeah, so I'm still gets me with that. I'm 21 years old, about to be 22 this year, and she still gets me with that. Even, even like the, the life lessons that her parents were teaching her, like just like, uh, like the cop talk, and I was just like, I was like, oh, that I was like, yes. I was like, I wonder, and I really do wonder if that's just a talk that, you know, black families have with each other with their kids about the ABCs of what to do if you get pulled over or you ever get confronted with a cop. I don't know if that's something that's just black people do or brown people do, or if that's just something like everybody has that talk with their kids. And I, I have a pretty di a diverse set of subscribers so I really want to hear from y'all if y'all watch this video is that a talk that your parents have had with you or is that just like a, a black community kind of thing because I was like I, oh my god yes like yes I get that you know I feel it I also related a lot when um Star was explaining why she wasn't ready to lose her virginity I'm sorry I gotta sit this down my arm hurts <laughs> I, um, I just I related with her so much when she was explaining why she wasn't ready to lose her virginity and I was like I felt the exact same way because at her age I felt the exact same same way because when I got to high school I saw myself as a, as a african-american female being represented like very poorly from like other students as just we, I felt like we was being represented as a statistic because like when I got to high school I saw so many black girls like just walking around pregnant it was just like it was ridiculous and I'm just like I don't want to end up like that I don't want to be pregnant in high school and may or may not finish high school I don't want to be another statistic because you know 
black females have that statistic on just being teen moms and dropouts from high school and I didn't want to be that statistic so I completely agree with her and I just I felt where she was coming from because I felt that same way and I mean and I don't mean at 16 I mean when I first entered high school at 14 years old there was kids that I went to that I went to school with that was, you know, my age and high, that was my age and we entered high school together walking around pregnant. They were 15, 16 years walking around pregnant. I'm just like, sometimes some of them 16 and shit on a second child or a third child. I'm just like, I don't want to be that person. Like, I don't want to be that girl, even though you might not be, of course, you're not intentionally getting pregnant. I don't know. Because when you're that young and you're already on baby number three, I don't know what you're doing. Because obviously you should have learned from number one that you should have been wrapping it up or not doing it at all. But mm, not my business. Not my business. I'm not going to do tea today. I'm not going to do it. But I just, I, I just, I, I recognize why so much on that. Because I'm like, I felt that same way when I was in high school. Seeing that, I was just like, that's that same way. And ending off on my review like with like a, a, a very very good note like I, like I said before I laughed so much doing even though this book is dealing with a very heavy like very serious topic I just love that we had so many chances to laugh in the book too and it wasn't all sad and it you know you know just somber kind of attitude it was like you had your moments where you can laugh and hee hee and ha ha and be like that's so true and like slap your knee and just agree and it's like oh my god I love this so much like my favorite part like like, like my highlights the highlighted moment of all the moments I laughed during this book was when Star went to Khalil's funeral and she was talking about the women doing the Holy Ghost two step I nearly died people and I think I was on the bus when I read that part I could have died because I'm just like I have a name for it now and I was like that is so true like I hate when I go to church and I'm next to one of those people that does it because like they don't care about who's around them like I understand you feeling the Holy Ghost I feel you I understand you feeling Jesus working through you but you ain't got to be throwing your arms all over enough to slap me in my face because I'm going to slap you in front of Jesus and everybody if you hit me. Like, dead serious. Like, I, I just, it's a natural reaction. If you hit me, I'm going to slap you in front of God and everybody. Like, I just cannot do it. And, so, like, I'll be like, oh, my God. And sometimes you really don't know what's real and what's not because you do have those people that like to go to church and perform. But you do have those people that just really feel, really feel it. But you got those people that just want to perform. And I can't take those. I just cannot do it. But, oh, my God, y'all. I love this book so freaking much. I cannot wait for June 5th to come around because if you don't know June 5th is when Angie Tommy's second book on the come up comes out it's not in a series or anything it's a standalone books but it's just you know it's set in like the same world like you know our today world it's set in our world you know it just follows another character and I just oh my god cannot wait for that to come out I just found out that comes out on the 5th oh my god cannot wait till that comes out um I've been kind of like on a roll with pre-ordering my books that I've been excited to come out for this month and I'm adding this to the list because I didn't know about it. But oh my god, y'all. Like, oh, I'm so excited. Like, if y'all have not read this book, y'all need to read it. I can't even contain myself. I don't know what else to even say about it. I just loved everything about this book. I thought this book was just really amazing and it hit everything. It hit everything on the nose. She put a foot in it. It was good. It was good. It's freaking amazing, okay? It's, 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 I'm going to just end it off right there because I feel like gush about this book for hours if you let me because it was so good so I'm happy I got the chance to read this I'm happy I finally picked it up because I have had it for a while so I'm happy I actually got the chance to read it I cannot wait for the movie to come out though so I could be in a movie theater after that oh my god that's gonna be one of those movies that is like yeah we have to go see it when it comes out I've already told my fiance he has to read this he has to pick it up because I really do think this is something that he would really enjoy so I already told him he don't have an option he gotta read it I would try to get my brother to read it, but in all honesty, I really don't think he's going to read it. I'm, I've really been trying hard people to get him into reading. I'm really trying to find different things that he like, and I, the only thing I could really think of that he would really, like, really read, read is comic books. That's the only thing. Comic books and graphic novels and manga, because I've seen him read manga. That's the only thing I can, I can actually see him binge reading and stuff like that, but I just... I would love for him to read this, but if I give this to him, I know he's probably only going to read three or five chapters and then not go back and then I'm going to be like, where's my book? Okay. So yeah, I'm just, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. This I'm going to just ask him if this is something that he would be interested in reading because sometimes I think he just tells me he'll read it just for my sake. And um, yeah, it's raining now, so it might have got a little darker. Like, I don't know. 
But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching my video. I'm gonna end it right here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can comment below, and you know we could talk about this book if you liked it, or if you haven't read it yet, but you want to like read it, and we can talk about it. Cause like I like talking in the comments. So yeah, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Strawberry champagne on us. Lucky for you, that's what I like.